In our previous problem, we were able to discuss that this function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x is not differentiable at x is equal to 0. Then along the process of finding the derivative at x is equal to 0, we were able to get this expression which is equal to the limit of absolute value of x over x as x approaches 0. Then you were able to determine that the function is not differentiable by just getting the limit from the left hand side and the limit from the right hand side. So we were able to get that limit using this um, property of absolute value or definition of absolute value, which is equal to x if x greater than or equal to zero, then negative x if x is less than zero. Then before I said that the absolute value is a piecewise defined function. Okay, piecewise defined function because it comprises of two expressions over a specified domain. So you can see in this image, this is actually the graph of the absolute value. Now, if you are interested and you were not able to see and watch our previous discussion, you can click the link below for more information. Now, this topic is very related to our next topic. Our next topic is about one-sided derivative. So, um, let's have first the definition of the one-sided derivative. If the function f is defined at the number a, then the derivative from the right of f of a, denoted by f prime sub plus of a, is defined by this formula. As you can see, this formula is very familiar. This is actually the formula that we use, the formula for finding the derivative using the definition. And this is actually the definition of finding the derivative. But what's, um, what's interesting here is we are only considering the values of uh, each from the right side of zero. So the notation from, for the right-hand derivative is this one, and this is equivalent to this formula. This is f prime sub plus of a, which is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches 0 from the right. So this is our clue that we are considering the right-hand derivative. That is um, considering the values from the right of zero. So we call this one as the right-hand derivative. Um, on the other hand, we have the definition for the left-hand derivative, and this is denoted by this notation, and the formula is this one. So this is the left-hand derivative, f prime sub minus of a is equal to the limit of f of a plus h, minus f of a over h as h approaches zero from the left. So this is left-hand derivative because we're considering the values from the left of zero. And this is equivalent to this formula, f prime sub minus of a is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of a as x approaches a from the left. Okay, then you have to take note over x minus a. Again, this is what we call the left-hand derivative. If the derivative exists, you have to take note of this. If the limit exists from the right or from the left hand of a. Now, we have um, important remark for this topic. A function f defined in an open interval containing a is differentiable at that value a if and only if what is this the right hand derivative and the left hand derivative both exist and are equal okay now again for the derivative to exist the right hand derivative must be equal to the left hand derivative if the right hand derivative is not equal to the left hand derivative then the derivative 
does not exist. Okay, as you can see in this formula, recall the right hand derivative formula must be equal to the left hand derivative formula for the derivative to exist. Okay? Now to to explain more on the topic, we have an example. Let f of x be equal to the absolute value of 1 minus x squared. Then determine if f is differentiable at 1. Again, the problem states that we're going to determine if the function f is differentiable at, at 1. Okay? So all we have to do is to find the derivative of this function. But since this function involves absolute value, so we need to follow the property of absolute value. Recall, again, this absolute value is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, negative x if x less than 0. So what are we going to do with this expression or this um, equation? We have to redefine this one by applying the property of absolute value. Notice in the absolute value, whatever the expression inside the absolute value, you just copied that one, then the specified domain, then the negative of the expression inside the absolute value, then that expression must be less than zero. So this one, this becomes this one, okay? Absolute value of 1 minus x squared is equal to the expression inside the absolute value, 1 minus x squared, if 1 minus x squared greater than or equal to 0, okay? Then the negative of the expression inside the absolute value, 1 minus x squared, just like this one, if 1 minus x squared less than 0, okay? So this is now our, supposed to be the new, um, the new definition of this equation. However, we need to find the value or values of x that can make this expression true. So what would be the value of x in which 1 minus x squared must be greater than or equal to 0? So all we have to do is to solve for x first for this expression. Then you solve for, this, uh, for the values of x this one for this expression for us to know the specified domain for each expression okay okay now we solve first this expression 1 minus x squared if 1 minus x squared greater than or equal to 0 so we solve for x in this expression 1 minus x squared greater than or equal to 0, then this becomes negative x squared greater than or equal to negative 1, applying the law of inequality. Then um, multiplying this by negative to make this positive, then the inequality symbol will be reversed. So greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to. Then solve for x. That is getting the square root of both sides. So this becomes square root of x squared less than or equal to the square root of 1. But the square root of 1 is 1. Now we have an important property that the square root of x squared is just equal to the absolute value of x. So we have now an inequality involving absolute value. Now another important property for inequality that involves absolute value this is equivalent to x less than or equal to 1, but greater than or equal to negative 1. In other words, this is now our specified domain. The expression 1 minus x squared, if x must be less than or equal to 1, but greater than or equal to negative 1. So this is our domain, meaning um, the values of x in this uh, interval make the expression true. So we are done with this. So um, we move on to this expression. Negative 1 minus x squared. Now if we are going to multiply negative by this expression, this becomes x squared minus 1. 
if 1 minus x squared less than 0, right? So solving for x, 1 minus x squared less than 0. So we have negative x squared less than negative 1. Okay, then multiply again by the negative symbol. So to make it positive, then the inequality symbol will be reversed or is reversed. Then getting the square root of both sides, we have square root of x squared is greater than the square root of 1, which is equal to 1. And again, square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x greater than equal to 1. Another property of inequality involving absolute value, this is equivalent to x less than negative 1 or x greater than equal to 1. In other words, the domain for x squared minus 1 is x less than negative 1 or x greater than 1. So our final um, function is this one. Okay? So we were able to redefine the function. So f of x is equal to the absolute value of 1 minus x squared is equal to x squared minus 1 if x less than negative 1. Okay? Because we have to... Uh, we have two set of domain, x squared minus 1, if x less than 1, then 1 minus x squared, if x less than or equal to 1, but greater than or equal to negative 1, then the other one, x squared minus 1, if x greater than or equal to 1. So it's very now clear that the function is a piecewise defined function, right? So to determine if this function is differentiable, we solve for the left and the right-hand derivative. So that is using the second formula in slide 36. So we are now ready in finding the derivative of the given function. So we start first in finding the right-hand derivative of the given function at x is equal to 1. So this is given by this notation f prime sub plus of 1 is equal to the limit of f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. So if you go back to the definition, uh, all we have to do is to select um, expressions whose domain is greater than 1. So this expression, because it has a domain x greater than 1. So by just following the formula, f of x corresponds to this expression x squared minus 1 minus zero. Why is it uh, f of one is zero? f of one is zero because at x is equal to one, the corresponding expression is this. All we have to do is to substitute one to this expression. So one minus one squared is zero. That's why this is zero over x minus one as x approaches one from the right. So simplifying the whole expression, we come up with the limit of the quantity of x minus 1 times x plus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. And this will be cancelled. Then what is left is limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. This is already linear, so all we have to do is to simply substitute 1 to this variable. So this becomes 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So therefore, the right-hand derivative of the given function is 2. Now, how about the left-hand derivative? This is given by f prime sub minus of 1 is equal to limit of f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left. So, going back to the um, function, we are considering here the values of 1 from the left. So, you go back to the domain. You choose the right domain. So the right domain is this because this is x greater than 1. So this is not the one. x less than or equal to 1. This one less than negative 1. So the correct one is this domain. And the corresponding expression is 1 minus x squared because x less than 1. So by just following the formula, we have um, the expression corresponds to the f of x. 1 minus x squared minus 0, this is our f of 1, over x minus 1. Simplifying the expression, we have to take note that the equivalent of x minus 1 is this. 
So, x minus 1 can be written as the negative of 1 minus x. Okay? So, this will be cancelled then. What is left is limit of the negative of the quantity of 1 plus x as x approaches 1 from the left. And again, this is already linear. So, we, we can just simply substitute 1 to the variable. And this becomes the negative of 1 plus 1 is equal to the negative of 2. So we notice that the right-hand derivative, okay, the right-hand derivative is not equal to the left-hand derivative because the right-hand is equal to 2, while the left-hand is equal to negative 2. So it follows that f prime of 1, which is the derivative of the function at x is equal to 1, does not exist. So f is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. Okay, thank you so much. Hope you learned this video and keep on sharing what you learned from this video. So thank you and God bless.